Welcome to Hokey Religion, the Star Wars podcast. This is Tyler. And that's Michael. Oh, that's me. <laughs> Michael and it's me. Running around the table. <laughs> we have to get all its energy out before the podcast. It. It's like a toddler. It? Yep. <laughs> You're in it how, now. How dare you? Now you know how that's I That's not my perfect burr. That's not my perfect burr. Perfect burr. That's not my perfect burr. <laughs> It's not my prefer verbal pronoun. <laughs> well, I would prefer verbal to be called. When you just make noises yeah. like that, we, we're we going to go with it. Right. Well. So guess what happened since our last episode? Uh, Rogue One tickets. Oh, that. Yeah. So <laughs> as was discussed last episode, they actually announced on Thanksgiving evening that Rogue One tickets would be going up the Monday after Thanksgiving. And here we are. And here we are. We are already <laughs> out. <laughs> They're yep. already out. <laughs> By the time you're hearing this episode, the tickets are already out. Hopefully you got some. I assume there were some left for you we're to get. We're in a really bad situation right now because <laughs> they're hearing this. Yep. It's already done. Yep, it's <laughs> Everyone's over. bought their tickets already. <laughs> we're recording this. We haven't bought any tickets yet. Michael, not ready yet. <laughs> Michael's a dick and has to go on vacation. <laughs> has to, apparently. I have to. And we're recording this Thanksgiving weekend before the tickets have gone on sale. <laughs> so fingers crossed that we end up with any. <laughs> we're in the middle of our living room. With all of our families around <laughs> us right Thanksgiving. now. Yeah. Everyone's passed out from tryptophan. Yeah. Shh. <laughs> Listeners, don't be too loud. Not from the turkey. <laughs> <laughs> Just a regular Saturday night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the tickets go up for us tonight. Midnight. No. Today is Saturday yeah. for yeah. us. So it's midnight tonight, right? Goes up midnight. Monday midnight, which means no, it's morning. 12 a.m. Monday. Yes, and today's Saturday, Michael. We are recording this on a Saturday, therefore, Damn Sunday it. night at midnight. Damn it. It would, that would go up. Was it the 20? <clears throat> Damn, it's the 28th. Yeah, Monday. So, tickets, uh, after you were already hearing this, tickets went up. Even if you worse. didn't know, <laughs> go find them. Uh, hopefully, there's some left. That's even worse for us. Uh, we're going to try to go opening night. There's, I'm assuming there's going to be tickets for Thursday night since it opens on a Friday. There's usually some yeah. kind of midnight showing on a Thursday. Yeah. So, fingers crossed we can get Thursday or Friday. I mean, with Force Awakens, we got a 7 p.m. <clears throat> yeah. Like the day before. Quote but I mean, they waited until less than 20 days to put the tickets on sale for this. So. I don't know how many sh- showings. Does that affect showings? I don't know. It, <clears throat> to me, it almost to me it almost seems like there's less confidence in how well it would do. Yeah, that's what it seems like. Because it feels like, like maybe the, just because they want it to be <clears throat> different. Then, like you keep seeing all these stories of you know Rogue One's really going to be the teller of how well these standalone films are going to do. Yeah. Like if a standalone film can do it, but then they don't have a presale that gives them any foresight into how well it's going to do. Like they don't right. really want to know yet well yeah i don't know it depends on <clears throat> or if they're just they trying really, to drive up hype do they really need that much uh insight this early i guess not for that i don't know i don't, I don't know, know i mean depends. obviously you're not going to break any of uh episode seven's records i doubt no that's going to be hard to do ever again yeah um i don't know to me because by the time you the tickets go on sale that will be 18 know. days until the film comes out yeah it's pretty close which is two, you know, two and a half weeks yeah um which I still think is ridiculous, but at least they did put them on sale instead of just like a normal movie like that no one cares about where they just come out like the week beforehand. <laughs> <clears throat> That's basically what's happening. Almost. I yeah, it doesn't still doesn't make sense to me, but So anyway, we'll be going um that night. I don't know, we we'll probably record a little something. Yeah, like we did with episode seven. As soon as we get out, we'll record something crappy on Hot Takes. Hot takes. Hashtag with... hot takes. <laughs> sure. Hot cakes. <laughs> That's <laughs> That's another hashtag. <laughs> Follow our secret Twitter account for hashtag, hashtag hot cakes. Hot cakes <laughs> with Michael and Tyler. <laughs> That's our flapjack show. <laughs> Late night hot cakes. <laughs> Lots of twerking. Mm, hot cakes. <clears throat> work that twerk. What did you just say? Huh? What? <laughs> work that 
twerk. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's what I thought you said. Oh, okay. That's Just what I really said. Making sure yeah. that I needed that's to hit you, you now. <clears throat> Good. Anyway. So <laughs> in talking about Rogue One coming out and their expectations of it, there's been there was discussion, of course, about what's the plan for Star Wars coming up. Um, is there going to be another trilogy after nine? Are there going to be more um, standalones? Because all they've announced up to is Han Solo. Yeah. And uh, well, wait. So, but let's let's uh, sure put some filler in here. Go for it, <laughs> Michael. So Rogue, filler up. Rogue One. What are you most excited about uh, seeing? I guess. Like, is it? Are you most excited for the canon to be expanded? Are you most excited to learn more about a character? I. Mean, I, I could, I can tell you mine if you want to think about it. Huh? I can tell you what. Go I'm, for it. Okay. Uh, it's the uh, the canon. I I I mean, well, maybe <laughs> maybe I should think about it before I ask no. this. Question. So here's here's the deal. I I've said this before, and the characters all seem cool. The whole team seems great. Yeah. I expect all of them to die. So I'm going into this really not caring about what happens to them at all. The characters. Really? Yes. The main the main crew, the Rogue One crew. They're not all gonna die. Most of them should be dead by the end of this, <laughs> or you'll board your money back. <laughs> <laughs> all dead or money back? No, I mean, obviously we're having to ret- retcon all of this in. I almost said retrocon. <laughs> <laughs> we're retroconning all of this. No. What to, are you trying to say? We have to retcon all of this into the existing films and canon and all of that. Oh, you know, to make the story complete with the movies that were made forever ago in, you know, 77. Yeah. So obviously none of them existed in anyone's mind yeah. at that point. But if they went through this huge, important mission, wouldn't they like have been a part of something after the fact? Maybe. But then, uh, yeah, I don't know. And why did they show up? Why did they show up just now? Well, I don't know. I guess they kind of gathered all these people. Well, I mean, together. okay, so Chirrut dies. Spoiler yeah. alert. Right. He he dead. Um, <laughs> I assume Baze is going to die as well. They both seem very throwaway to me. Well, Chirrut dies before Baze. Obviously, because, <laughs> because, because Baze when, has to step cause, up. Because when he dead. <laughs> yeah. I assume Baze dies as well in some sort of blaze of glory. A Baze of glory, if you will. Oh! Where's my rap horn? <laughs> yeah, I was it. waiting for it. You didn't have it ready. <laughs> my phone's way well, over there. <laughs> so I assume he goes out, you know, doing something great because of Chirrut dying. Mm-hmm. Um, they both seem very like throwaway ancillary characters. Mm-hmm. Um, Jen, obviously very important. I there's been like nothing focused on. Uh, oh, what's his face? Uh, bu- Cassian? Bu- bu- no, not well. Oh, oh, the bug guy dude, the pilot guy. Yeah. Uh, Riz Ahmed's character? Yes. I've totally uh, always, always blank on his name. Yeah. Like, they've not really shown much of anything about him. He seems very ancillary as well. The main characters seem like Cassian, K2, and Jin. Right? I yeah, guess, I that's guess. That's the three main characters, because yeah. everything you see is those three together yeah. doing stuff. Right. And and Galen, obviously. I expect Galen to die. Yeah. I expect... I, I don't know about Cassian. Cassian and Jin. Would, Cassian ex- and Jin would be the two I think would make it. Do you expect um what's his face the director Krennic? Do you expect him to die? He has to die, right? I really want Vader to kill him. To kill him like hardcore. I was gonna say that. I was gonna say that. <laughs> um, I want Vader just to be so angry that he just like does yeah. something super violent to him. Okay, so angry I've, with what happened with the plans getting yeah. out with something like that. I expect the plans getting out to fall back on Krennic. I am, and for the blame to fall on him. I for mentioned some last episode I've been reading the Vader comics, and Vader's attitude through all of that is carrying over into the canon for this movie, yeah. right? Because it's all the same kind of time period, mm-hmm. or yeah, within five years or so. I mean, it's it's not that much time. Yeah, but yeah, Vader is super pissed because mm-hmm. Palpatine is pissed. Like I said in the last episode, Vader realizes during the comic time period that. He realizes what his relationship with Palpatine is, and he is just not on the same page, I guess. You yeah. Know? So, yeah, to for him to take his anger out on Krennic would be... That would be really yes. cool. <laughs> because Palpatine's going to be mad at Vader for the plans getting away. Yeah. And then Vader's going to take that out on Krennic for, you know, Galen was your responsibility and sure. all of this stuff. Well, at that point, though, do they have all they need out of Galen? 
Um, well, yeah, they're I still don't know. doing is weapons it, is... tests, so the weapon hasn't been dialed in yet. And he is the, which actually I just learned this the other day. He's his title is special weapons director, not like director. Director Krennic? Yeah. He's the weapons director? He's a special weapons director. So he's director. like in charge of the Blazer Project, basically. Basically, yeah. Which makes way more sense. We were kind of yes. wondering about that. Like earlier. where he fell in with Tarkin and yeah. all of that. Yeah. Well, this, this, yeah, this makes much more sense. So but, Galen's directly his responsibility. Yeah. Getting him to do his job to make the laser work. Right. So I'm wondering, is it, um, do they have all that they need out of Galen? Not if they're still point? testing. I, I I would say not. Well, if they're obviously, still testing, they, they get it to a point. Even after the plans are stolen, they get it, the weapon to a point to where it works. Yes. So, I mean, through some means. Do you think they steal the plans? So maybe they, you know, they uh, they figured it out. I, I don't think when the movie starts, they've got it dialed in yet. So they maybe, still need Galen by the time the movie starts. By the time the movie's yes, over, yes. obviously they've got it sorted out. That's what I mean. I mean. Obviously, this would happen towards the end of the movie if Vader yeah. was to kill him. So maybe it's less of a uh you failed at something and more we have no more use of you you know um probably a mixture of both like it's your fault the plans got out yeah but also what do you who what, has the plans now? does krennic have the plans or does galen well i'm assuming because the Jen plans has have nothing... them in that like vhs case <laughs> that she's running down the beach in. well yeah i know those i we assume we those assume. are the plans yeah. but who was responsible for them before that that's what I was wondering a while ago. Does Galen? Do they like stumble on the plans well, for the Death Star? So you know, while they're whole... trying to get Galen, or was it expected that they're going for the plans? Well, I'm assuming their whole their whole cost, costume, their whole um, dressing up as Imperials, their yeah. whole kind of sneaking in thing. But was, was to that get to get plans. Galen, or was that to get the plans? That's what I was trying to figure out. Well, I mean it. The, trailer, the whole communication was: we got a communication. There's a weapons test. It's from your father. Does the trailer? So say is it to go get their that? go get her? Fa- I assume that the, her father isn't necessarily the big problem. The big like the rebels aren't like go get your dad. We're gonna support. We're gonna back a mission to go save your father. Yeah, I would think it would be more to get the plans, or are the plans just a side effect of going to save him? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I, don't, I, I think I remember. I have a vague memory of something in the trailer yeah. mentioning something about getting the plans before they actually set off to go get them. I don't know if that's actually in the trailer or not, because that would seem I, to yeah, indicate... Yeah, I, I don't recall. That would seem to indicate that they went there to begin I mean, they may not know if her father's still alive at that point either, because it could have just been that one communication they received. Maybe. Like, you know, if he got a communication out, he may have been caught and he may be dead now. So Is that what happened? I don't know. Oh, okay. <clears throat> or it could be they go to save her dad. They find him, but he dies before they can get him out, and the consolation prize is getting the plans because obviously he would have had the plans in his head of how everything works. So you think they find the plans on him or in his possession somewhere? Both. I don't know. Huh. Maybe he. Maybe they get him and the plans, and I, I doubt Galen's going to make it out of this alive. No. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, There's no way. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know what... I would think the mission would be to go get the plans because there's no guarantee that the dad is still alive. Obviously, they probably, I assume they tried to save him and he dies somehow yeah. in that saving mission. Right. Um, but yeah, I want Krennic to kind of be like force quartered, <laughs> if you will. I doubt that's going to happen in a Star like Wars a Hell- movie. <laughs> it's like a Hellraiser movie. <laughs> I doubt it's going to happen in a Star Wars movie, but that's what I, I kind of... I just... I really want something really, really... Really violent to happen. Uh, unnecessarily violent to come from Vader. Yeah, me too. And I, know, I mean, I know we've said this multiple times. I want him to be super badass with his lightsaber. I kind yeah. of want him to throw it like he does in Battlefield. Yeah. Um, Battlefield. Battlefront, not Battlefield. <laughs> um, same game. Um, I just want him to do something violent, horribly yeah. so. Right. Because Vader did. I think that's in this especially in this period he was super yeah like just angry at everything and just yeah i want that angry yeah. violent um super strong uh intimidating vader you know yes yeah not the quiet hanging out on the death star vader <laughs> right yeah i think i'm most excited about seeing the empire at their uh i don't know is this this isn't even really their peak is it the, um... their peak is probably around the Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, probably. Era. Yeah. But I guess you, you're still going to see them at almost full strength, you know, where everything's kind of 
so to speak, going how Palpatine wants it. You know, yeah. every, the force is being built up. They've got the Death Star almost working. I mean, they've obviously already got like all these big AT ACTs and all these troops, and it's right. they've already got right. enough. Yeah, yeah. I'm really excited to see that <coughs> part of it. Maybe we'll get some more. I don't know more about how how that organization is set up. Yeah. Um. There was a. There was. If you didn't see it on Thanksgiving night, there was a. Kind of when the tickets were announced, there was another kind of teaser. It was like the Thanksgiving ABC teaser thing. Oh, I didn't watch that one. Um. Then there was a. I, I showed you the GIF of this, but there's the scene like where they're in high, where they're like fighting in those like alleys and streets, and oh, the right. stormtrooper <laughs> chucks a grenade. K two just grabs it and like catches it and just like looks at it then just chucks it over his shoulder and blows <laughs> up like four other stormtroopers well it, like yeah he he grabs it and looks at it and then Jin it cuts to Jin and Jin's she's, like she's like hey the, uh behind she's you? like yelling at him and there's stormtroopers running and at him just like behind just it chucks it, just behind chucks him it behind without him. even looking <laughs> k2 kind of seems like this is what i said to you earlier but k2 just seems like a chiller bones mr bones from uh <laughs> aftermath right like not so mentally unstable <laughs> but just just cold <laughs> yeah just kind of like yeah, i don't whatever <laughs> I'm here. Fine. I still want to see Mr. Bones in a I really some kind of cartoon or something. Something. His own spin-off. Just <laughs> the adventures, adventures of Mr. Bones. <laughs> adventures of Mr. Bones. Uh, <laughs> violence. Would, yeah. <laughs> Plenty of violence. That would be amazing. Yes. Uh so speaking of Kathleen Kennedy. Yeah, speaking of Rogue One and spin-off films. So I thought it was interesting. Just to start with this, I thought it was interesting that Kathleen was, I think this was in an e, uh, Entertainment Weekly article, and she was saying how the spinoff movies was George Lucas's idea before he even sold to Disney. He had already talked to her about an idea of doing spinoff films and doing individual movies, huh. but he didn't really, he wasn't really sure. I don't think he had an idea of any individual ones. He actually had, I think he had a few ideas, but Rogue One and Han Solo were not any of them. Yeah, Kathleen said that specifically. So, so far, the ones we do have or will have are are not the ones that George had ideas for. And we were talking about this. And he had a handful of ideas already. It was crazy to me to think that George <laughs> was going to expand uh, expound on Star Wars. his own universe. Yeah, and... Like, outside of the story of the Skywalker. And that's the thing, is every time I... Like, hearing the new directors that have worked with George getting ideas from him and Kathleen talking about stories about George talking about stuff. It sounds like he had a lot of really good ideas and he wanted to do a lot of stuff, but yeah. was, uh, I don't know, afraid to execute on it or too lazy to execute on it. I don't know. Maybe didn't trust anyone else to not do it himself and then didn't have the time to do it himself. Yeah. Which is frustrating, which I'm glad he sold it to Disney so that other people with all the time and money could do that. Right. But it's everything I hear about him is like, yeah, that's that is what we wanted. <laughs> why did you not do those things? Why why did you do the things we didn't want? But it's stuff we're hearing about after the sale. Like these stories yeah. are coming out after the sale. Like we didn't hear any. No, no. It, from what I know about, anyway. It's like he did. It's like he did the stuff that was that was easy to him. At least you know, just I don't know him. I don't know any of the situations. But it almost feels like the stuff that was done was just kind of the easy stuff that that he could do. I don't know. Yeah, uh, and that's, that's, I mean, I like hearing all this stuff, and I like hearing that George was more involved than it ever seemed like he was. Would you really have wanted George to act on those ideas? Well, that's the or? problem, and I, I think you and I talked about this before, but just that it almost seems like he doesn't want anyone, he wouldn't want anyone else to do them, that he wants to do everything. But if I think we, we are fine with him being... Back when he was in control of it, you're saying. Yeah, like he, yeah. it's almost like he wanted to do everything. Right. Like it, I understand that it's his baby and it obviously he created all of this and he's the the all father of Star Wars but it's almost like he wouldn't he didn't really want to give up to control to someone else to make films to make the Star Wars films or be as involved in Star Wars I don't know. Like it had to be very specific people if it was going to be anybody. Um but even then like with Empire he asked Irving Kirshner to direct yeah. because he was so worn out from doing A New Hope. Yeah. So like, I, I, he didn't I don't, ask I don't him, know what the problem was then with all these ideas. Well, no. So I'm saying that to say he only asked him because of that. He didn't ask him because Irving was a great director or he thought... Yeah. Obviously, he trusted Irving, but he didn't ask him because 
he wanted some different vision or something into the universe. He asked him because uh, it was like out of a necessity. Yeah. And that's basically every, he, all the other choices that he made to bring other people in, like you're saying. Because he, he, it was out of necessity or it, had to, not because, yeah, because he, he was being forced to, like you were saying. Yeah. Like obviously like with the, with the cartoons and stuff, he's not going to be in charge of those, but he, sure. He got somebody really good to be in charge I mean, of them. I mean, think about all the legends. He was still involved. Think about all the legends novels that were written and how, he never admitted that most of them were canon. Yes. Like they were just kind of made and he sort of gave his approval for them to be released. But yeah. He never wanted any of them to be canon, apparently. Yes. There was George Canon, there was Expanded Universe, and then there was like a... That's right, yeah. Mini, um, there was like multiple canons. What's his name was was talking about that? Pablo? Uh, no. Um, or uh, the um, the guy in charge of the Holocron? No, the guy, the guy who makes Clone Wars <laughs> and Rebels. What's his name? Why did you do this to my brain? Why? <laughs> How can I not? Dave Filoni. Yes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Filoni was talking about that, about he, how there was, um, or was it Pablo? <laughs> it might have been Pablo talking about know. it. How there was George Cannon, like you're saying. There was, and then there was this whole expanded universe idea Yeah. from all the, what are now the Yeah, there's like books. film Cannon, George Cannon, and expanded universe. Yes. And George had all this, like, what was and wasn't canon in his own mind. Yes. That he knew to him. Which was, didn't necessarily line up. But wasn't necessarily in existence anywhere else. Just that, to him, that was canon as right. to what happened. Right. So, so, like, if you went to George and asked a question about some property you were working on, he would give you his George canon. Like, no, you can't write about that because that doesn't line up with the, the canon, my canon. Yeah. I don't know how. The, right, or, you some, know, whatever. Something like that, yeah. Um. But yeah, it, like all of these things, these other people involved in Star Wars when he was in charge of it, it was all out of necessity or the fact that he couldn't handle it himself or yeah, didn't like want he, to. It's, he, he, had, he had what he wanted Star Wars to be, but never really put it into action. Right. So now is, we've got this twist of now it's almost a community driven thing where yes. the, you've got the story group and all these writers and directors they pull in. All these people that were huge Star Wars fans all their lives right. and are now part of this giant story group and are right. in charge of the canon and how the story moves forward. And I don't um, think you could have gotten... Like, if you had started there with Star Wars, I, I don't think it would have been any good. Started with spinoffs? No, if or? you had started with the way it's run now, with a story group and oh. all of that stuff. I think if you well, had yeah. started with that initially, it wouldn't have been any good. I think you kind of need the one man's vision thing to kind of set it, it had up. to break down for it to get better. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um, so we should be grateful. Well, yes, I, I'll always be grateful to George, no matter how much fun I make of him. <laughs> um, but it's like, so there was going to be a, um, a Boba Fett spinoff. Suppose, supposedly there was a Boba Fett spinoff in the works. Yeah. And Josh even Trank a, was going to even had a trailer, like a teaser prepared and ready. There was a teaser in existence for a Boba Fett film that never got released. According to Kathleen. Yeah. They had, they had shot something. I don't know. Man, I really want to see that. Even if we, that would be, yeah. Even if it's like with a massive disclaimer, like this is not gonna happen. This will <laughs> never happen. If we could just see, yeah. I mean, maybe it's just like, I don't it's know. It's just slave it's, one <laughs> flying across the screen that's <laughs> on a <laughs> string, <laughs> like bottle rockets, like right. <laughs> explosions. Yeah. No, Did but there's like an actual Boba Fett standalone teaser that exists somewhere in the universe pretty cool. that we will never <laughs> probably ever get to see. Did you ever, um, did you ever watch the wet hot American summer? I don't know why this reminded me of this, but the TV show. Yeah. The new one, the new one. Yeah. Did you see at the end? I don't know why I thought of this. It's, it's a weird, <laughs> there's a tangent here. We'll get back to it. <laughs> That's what we do. <laughs> it was one of the ending episodes where the army comes into the camp. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. And one of the tanks has like, missiles quote unquote on it and they're just like giant crayola <laughs> crayons yeah. painted green <laughs> yep i remember that that's what i'm imagining like stuff that's <laughs> just <laughs> slave one shooting crayons, shooting out, crayons of out of it <laughs> yeah that seems like anyways <laughs> that's a fan film in the making <laughs> i guess but yeah so talking about the spinoffs and all of those things like that so uh, in this uh, Entertainment Weekly article, Kathleen was being asked about, you know, so what's the plan for Star Wars? Are there going to be more spinoffs? Is there going to be another pre another uh, trilogy after Episode Nine? And apparently, they haven't officially talked about it yet, and that 
The plan is come January or February 2017, they're actually going to all sit down, story group, all the main people involved, and discuss what's the plan here, and she here going forward for Star Wars. She mentioned two writers and directors. So you're going to have people yes. like Gary Whitta. Like you're going to uh, have Everyone Colin. that's been involved almost so far, I it don't seems. think J.J. would show up for that, right? Maybe. I don't know. I don't think he would. I don't know. Maybe Ryan not. Ryan Johnson, maybe? So like, so by the, so by January, February, they will, they will, Rogue One will have come out. They will know how well at least one of the spinoffs had, has done. Uh-huh. Episode eight will be fully done, I think, with editing and everything. No. Um, or at least they'll have. No, a, that's going to be up to them. They'll have a pretty good cut of episode eight by then because um they'll probably have a rough idea they'll have they'll have a good idea of what episode eight is done and i think they'll already have been or be close to shooting they'll at least have a lockdown han solo stuff they'll have stuff so they'll have a good idea of yes most of the things coming forward and they would have had what's happened with the first standalone yeah so what are your thoughts on trilogy or more standalones or both after this, after, after nine. episode nine, so we we'll yeah, have because so nine... we have Rogue One this year, episode right. eight next year, Han Solo after that, and then episode nine after that. Yeah. Over the next, what is that? Three years. Yeah. So we've got three yeah, more three movies, years of movies. Three, three more movies. Decembers. Right. Provided there's no delays. Right. So you're asking, do you think there'll be another trilogy or more standalone? Do we need another trilogy? Do we want another trilogy? I don't think we can say for sure yet. I'd have to see how. Uh, nine ends, you know. Do we? And I saw some of this on like Reddit and people talking online. Do we need any more of the Skywalker line or Skywalker <laughs> storyline of a trilogy? If we did have a trilogy, no, because I think Luke is gonna die. I think I, Luke I is gonna agree. die at the end of. I think so because you've already got Solo gone. Yep. Leia could stick around, maybe, but she's really not that important of a character anymore yeah you know obviously if the new republic or whatever comes back at any point i doubt she's going to be that important you know maybe not um i'm sure she'll retire from all of this i mean if if everything about her character that we've learned so far is true and it is you know yeah she'll probably retire after this but yeah i i don't i don't think so so is obviously yes episode nine ending will will there be anything open to is ray luke's daughter and then we have to go on with that storyline of more Skywalkers and just more, oh, she's the one. No, wait, he's the one. No, wait, they're the one. No, we're the one. I would, I've been the one the actually, whole time. You know what? <laughs> Who says that? Us. In our hearts. We were always the we one. We were Michael. always the one. Um, yeah, the Force was sent to Earth. The real takeaway is that we were all the one, guys. The Force was sent to Earth in like uh, the E.T. egg. <laughs> <laughs> E.T. egg? Oh, that giant it, egg? Does he land in an egg or something? It's like a giant, giant, huge egg thing. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking more of like the Superman capsule egg thing. Oh. <laughs> I don't know why. The tiny little thing? Yeah. Um, I would rather see a trilogy. Well, yeah, I mean, standalones would be great. But I think if we had standalones, they're going to be from existing canon. Yes. Because um, that's, that's the thing. Is that episode 9 will be the furthest in the future of Star Wars that we have. Yes. So Well, actually, here, nothing... I'll ask you this. Would it be... Because what I want to see is something really out there um, having to do with the Force. Like, like really out there, like the Force Planet with the brother and the sister from Clone Wars, like that kind of out there, yeah. Like really existential, like really existential Force Force stuff. Huh. Um, you want to see that in that, the film, in like Episode Nine or Eight? Well, I just want to see that in general. So, okay. do you think that would be better suited for a standalone movie, or like a or like a trilogy of the history of the Force? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, even like having a movie about the Old Republic would be sweet, and you could get some. Kind of like going back even further yeah. to the original war, right? Um, that you know, whatever the canon they work, right? However, they rework that canon. With Although, I, f- I feel like if they did that and tried to make it a trilogy, it'd be like a hobbit, another hobbit <laughs> mess up, <laughs> yeah. Because you go back that far and then you have stuff like outbound flight, where like those Jedi all fly, you know, go away on that on that ship to f- find stuff, and all that's from this? all that's from back with Thrawn. Um, it's kind of prequel stuff to Thrawn. Um, prequel stuff to Thrawn. What are you talking about? You should go back and read those books. 
I did. I just read them mm. recently. Read Outbound Flight. <clears throat> I don't know what that is. It's been a long time since I read Outbound Flight, so I'm going to have to look it up to get the actual All right, well, while you're looking story. that up, I'll say... Um, so, yeah. yeah, I want... I mean, you could have that in an Old Republic type of movie. I just can't figure out if that's... Should that be a standalone movie, or should that be a, a trilogy? Yeah. You could make a history of the Old Republic a trilogy. I don't know if it would be quite as interesting as the Skywalker story that we've had so far, but uh, it would be satisfying to see all that, especially with, did you watch the trailer for the new um, Old Republic expansion? No, I haven't seen it. It was like a, it wasn't like an in-game trailer or anything. It was a like a, a short story, mm. short movie, but it was incredible. It was It was really cool. Having something like that expanded into a full movie would be very satisfying to see the you know like all the history of the jedi where they came from and how things used to be that would be kind of cool interesting so outbound flight was it was this outbound flight project um it's kind of it was mentioned in the thrawn trilogy uh because joris um i don't kabouth kabouth how you pronounce <laughs> his name to, it was part of you know um him it was part of the story of him becoming a clone or being a clone and all of that. Right. So, and this actually takes place five years after Phantom Menace in the timeline of things. Yeah, of course, that's all broken up to hell now. But so, and um, I think even... What's broken up to hell? Well, the, that being canon. It doesn't necessarily have to take place five after five years after um, Phantom Menace anymore. But um, so it's before the Clone Wars have erupted and Jedi Master Joris, uh, he petitions the Senate to, uh, for support of a singularly ambitious undertaking. Six Jedi Masters, 12 Jedi Knights and 50,000 men, women and children embark Jeez. aboard a giant ship uh, equipped for years of travel on a mission to contact intelligent life and colonize undiscovered worlds beyond the known galaxy. Hmm, Kind of what Palpatine Kind of, but a, to do. a Jedi. But a Jedi-led one. Yeah. Jedi-led one, yes. Was that approved? So, um, In the so they were they the government tried to scuttle the expedition before it could even start, but Master Cabal foils a murderous conspiracy plot, winning him the political Cabal. capital he needs to set in motion the dream of outbound flight. Huh. Um, Jedi Cabal, so, Master Cabal. So, but it's just fun to say. Um, it seems that maybe it's secretly being orchestrated by an unlikely ally, unlikely ally, an evil dark Sith Lord, Darth Sidious, who has his own reasons for wanting Outbound Flight to move forward and ultimately to fail. Um, so there's Wait, this whole, what? but that's actually what that's canon that he wants. Uh, parts people... of that are canon now. Yeah. So I'm wondering, huh, if part of Outbound Flight could exist in some other form. That's really cool. That's a cool idea. Yes, because it does I've look like they possibly before. have pulled at least that idea of Palpatine going out past the known universe to search for other. Yeah, because he felt some kind of force right. thing. Um, and again, that it's been so so long since I read Outbound Flight that I cannot even recall how it ends. Okay, but just I, as we were talking about it, thinking about the Old Republic, and that was a giant mission to send all these people out, and how that does, like you mentioned, kind of tie into Palpatine wanting to look further out and if they could tie that back in with maybe a standalone film or yeah just looking back at that time period of and that's not even old republic that's five years after um well they could really put that phantom menace they could really put that well yeah i guess it depends on the involvement of the jedi because there was a but, lot of stuff that palpatine was doing between phantom menace and clone wars and revenge of the sith as we're seeing in all this new canon yeah all like he had all this stuff. other stuff and plans and missions and yeah drilling on Jakku and like all this stuff that he was just like it was happening that he was doing whatever because yeah. we don't even know how half of these things have ended up yet right um, I mean think about the the stuff in after after was it after yeah aftermath right with them digging on Jakku well and well with, no with Gallius Rax that's not what I was thinking of but yes because he had this Gallius too. Rax like apprentice whatever thing I guess I'm <laughs> that thinking he of, is I'm thinking about the um uh, what bip, 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 book was it in? Bip, bip, bip. Not Bloodlines. <clears throat> Damn it! Which one? Which uh, thing? Where he basically has this um, uh, failsafe plan where things go get like burnt and destroyed. And what book was that from? Do you know what I'm talking about? I do not recall that. Oh, crap! 
What book was it? Uh, it was one of the new ones? Yeah. And it was a failsafe to burn a bunch of stuff. It was like, in case of my death, go... Oh, it was... Um, it was No, it was comics. It was uh, um, Shattered Empire. The Shattered Empire okay, series. Okay. Did you ever read those? Yes. I mentioned a few Back things. Back when they first came out, which has been a couple of years. Yeah, I mentioned a few things from there. But there was... Um, like, he had these, like, robotic servants that would go and visit certain commanders and mm -hmm. would give them special messages from the emperor. Yes, to make him... In case of his death. To make him a, a, a appear still alive for a portion. Like, they, they didn't yeah. necessarily tell him he was dead yet, right? Well, there was still, yeah, the propaganda thing where uh, you weren't allowed to talk about... And Palpatine didn't didn't the robots have his face? Like it was almost yeah. like because because yeah. it was almost like they, he was sending that he couldn't travel to them because it was too dangerous well, for him. So he was sending these robots in his place and then talking to them through the robot. Like I, I can't supposedly because no one they didn't, he didn't want anyone to know he was dead yet. I can't remember if the yeah it was like his face projected on a visor and then gave them the message in yeah. person, so to speak. But that was part of the contingency plan else. so that no one would know that he was dead, right? But it was also like he was trying to set up other things, like still put other things in motion. In death, still, yeah, and still we had never, a plan. we never got because that that issue, that series was only six issues long. Yeah. We never got any more information about that, which yeah. kind of bums me out. I, but stuff like that no. is what I'm talking about. Yeah, Palpatine he, had a ton of stuff going on, and he had all these. There's plans a lot of stories you can go back to with that. Yeah, obviously, there's no, there's nothing tied to current canon past episode nine that we know about that matters way far in the future. That's why I'm saying. You kind of have to see, see how that ends, see how episode nine ends. Yeah. Um, but to answer your question in general right now, I think we could do with plenty of more, uh, uh standalone. Yes. Films. If, if you could write a good story and it not be ridiculous and be horribly stupid, I would be okay with an Obi-Wan trilogy. And I know that's been a fan thing for a while now, with with getting uh, I would McGregor really, back as Obi Wan. I would really just like to see maybe two, because I think tri like a, a trilogy would be kind of stretching. Yeah, it I feel a like one film is not enough. Yeah, but are they really going to do a duology? Would be too much. I don't think they would, but really, I yeah. I would like to see two Obi Wan movies, like a part one and part two. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. Um. Maybe all shot at the same time and then just divide it up. You know? Yeah, could do that. Uh, yeah, I, I would totally be on board for that. That'd be cool. But yeah, as far as uh, we don't need, I don't think we need any more of the Skywalker Line. saga. Yeah. Um, and unless, yeah, I mean. And with the new canon, I don't think we need another trilogy yet. I mean, yet. obviously yeah. we'll find out more mm -hmm. later, but but right now, no. And so. yeah, I mean, depending on what's what's Snoke's about, if there's anything important with the dark side that could be focused on in the past, maybe with that again, it might just still all be past related. Yeah. Um, but that could be interesting, maybe, yeah. especially mm -hmm. if he's from another universe. It would be cool to see. Yeah, like I was saying, what happens to the Force in the next two movies? Because it sounds like the light side is kind of reawakening. The dark yeah. side is reawakening a little. bit. Bit. I mean, it's kind of okay. been around a little bit longer, right? Because of Snoke yeah. practicing his voodoo and stuff. <laughs> uh, but to see where the Force progresses after that. I just pictured Snoke. When you said voodoo, I, I pictured um, dance magic from... <laughs> Snoke doing the with the balls and yeah, with the ball and then <laughs> dancing down the stairs <laughs> as the Goblin King from Labyrinth. Um, singing dance magic. <laughs> that just in tights, <laughs> in, <laughs> the in tights. tights. Throws off his robe. He's got the horribly tight uh, <laughs> Bowie pants. <laughs> his riding pants with uh, the crystal ball <laughs> <laughs> moving around on his fingers. In his pants and in his hand. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Sorry, you remind that. me of the babe. What babe? The babe with the power. What, what power? power? Power of voodoo. 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 He's singing that, I guess. Yep, exactly. Yeah. And that's when he throws I off his robe. <laughs> yeah, he throws off his robe and has this. Cried. Yep. <laughs> that's what just <laughs> happened in my head really quickly and scarily. Now I think someone needs to Photoshop Snoke's Snoke. face onto that with the hair and everything and then have the whole, the whole music video basically of that Oh, happening. the whole video. The whole song with Snoke's <laughs> face. 
I'm not that good at Photoshop. I'm so... <laughs> yeah. That's such a good movie. <laughs> if you haven't seen Labyrinth, go watch it. It's Everyone's seen Labyrinth amazing. at this point, right? I mean, come on. There's children out there. <laughs> poor, poor children. Poor children. Uh, yeah. So spinoffs, probably more likely to see more spinoffs than a trilogy at this point, as far as I can think. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. who knows? Mm-hmm. So, uh, as we've continued talking about Rogue One, Pablo <laughs> tweeted in this episode's uh, iteration of What That Tweet? What that tweet? What did I tweet? What that tweet? What did I tweet? And what is that? song is so horrible what that tweet <laughs> oh that song i'm sorry about that song but it makes me laugh every time so so what that tweet <laughs> pablo tweeted actually right before we started recording that there was an important scene worth a rewatch in the coming weeks from the original trilogy from a new hope mm-hmm. where they're all the bad guys are talking around the big table <laughs> um and general tag it's is saying legion until this of doom table <laughs> yeah the legion of doom table and general tag is saying until this battle station is fully operational we are vulnerable the rebel alliance is too well equipped they're most they're more dangerous than you realize and then admiral Mahdi replies dangerous to your starfleet commander not, not to, this to this battle station right the admiral Mahdi quote is what um pablo was saying should, is worth specifically a dangerous to your starfleet commander that was dangerous was, to your starfleet commander but not this battle station of course right. tag responds the rebellion will continue to gain support in the imperial senate and then, and then of course, Tarkin Vader walks in and Tarkin, and Tarkin takes in. over. The Imperial Senate is not blah blah blah. <laughs> <laughs> blah 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 blah. Goes back to eating his mashed potatoes because that's what I pictured <laughs> happened <laughs> after he, or he falls asleep in his chair. <laughs> the Imperial Senate would not. <laughs> Tarkin, Tarkin, Tarkin. Is he just like leaning <laughs> over? <laughs> He's leaning over know. a bowl of mashed potatoes. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> there's mashed potatoes <laughs> flying out of his mouth while he's, while he's talking. He interrupted himself. To yeah. <laughs> shh, Tarkin, shh. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> it does fit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, that I, We were talking about how that was interesting because <clears throat> obviously Rogue One's coming out and that's what he's talking about. But so obviously they have a pretty big... Starfleet, it seems like. I don't know about Starfleet, at least. Ground troops and AT, ACTs and, and whatever. Yeah, like I was saying, it's it's built up, you know? So how... Right I didn't expect the Rebels to have that much... I don't know. to For them to be seen as... Because they didn't seem to be viewed as a threat. I oh, guess only yeah, Tag okay. was right in viewing them as a threat at this point. Well, here's the thing. This is... We were talking about this right before I hit record. This is right after Rogue One, this scene, basically. Yeah, because the plans the have plans just been stolen. Just got out of Leia's grip with the droids. Right. Vader came back, and they're all talking about right. whatever. So this is, gosh, can't even be like a month. Maybe like a couple weeks. Maybe, yeah. After. So this is, yeah. Everybody's freaked out, probably. Or at least some people are. Maybe yeah, they're everyone. trying to find plans. So I think, yeah, like Tag is saying, they're, he's just now realizing, oh, wait, maybe they're a little more well-equipped than we thought. And no one else really believes that. Apparently. Or Especially least, with having the battle station in their grip. Like, at least like don't worry about it. We have this that we're sitting on right now. Yeah. Or, were they on the... They weren't on the Death Star then. They were on... Yeah, no, they were. Were they? That was... Yeah, because that's... Oh, yeah. Okay. That's, so... You know, blah, 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 dark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mashed potatoes. Got it. Um, so... So the, everyone else is like, oh, yeah, we got this big thing that apparently we just got working. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, guess, yeah, so, don't, so don't worry about <laughs> those guys with the plans to this thing that just started working. <laughs> right. Um, There's no way anything could happen to it. Yeah. Yeah. So Tag, I guess, is just now realizing, oh, shit, <laughs> these guys. They're, uh, so I wonder what. So I. I guess I haven't really thought about They're this. They're out there. How many of these guys do you think we will see? These guys. <laughs> yep. How many of them do you think we'll see in Rogue One? What are you talking about? Tag these or guys. body or. Oh. Do you well, think we will see any of them? I don't know. Do you think they'll like be evolved to. at all? I would like to see them. Obviously, we're going to have to we'll have... probably just see like the backs of their heads. <laughs> yeah. Because you can't have the, you can't, yeah, the well, original actors. You have to have really... You have to just have good lookalikes, um, some good makeup and hair and... 
but they're not going to have any speaking roles, which is what I would want. I probably, I guess. Which kind of sucks. Yeah, I, w- I would want that. I would, yeah. But yeah, I would, I, I would I want to. See, I want to see something happen to tags Starfleet <laughs> for this conversation you to be like, so? yeah, to yours because you couldn't hold your own against them, and obviously you lost all this. You know, you lost whatever. Yeah. Um. Well, but, so another thing from the Vader comics, Palpatine actually assigns Tag to Vader, as like interesting. At least in the beginning, I like I said, I haven't read all of all of them yet, but he actually assigns after Vader's failure with, or was this? No, sorry, this is after the Death Star. I'm getting my timelines mixed up. Yeah, I was gonna say after the Death Star, um, after the Death Star gets destroyed, Tag, uh, Palpatine assigns Tag to Vader, so he survives the the Death Star explosion. He gets off the Death Star. Yeah, because I mean, after because he was the basically the only one critical about the Death Star, at least at that table. Who so, was? Uh, Tag was. Tag. Yeah. Yes, because after Tarkin's potato explosion, um, Tag Tag says, you know, and what of the rebellion? If the rebels have obtained a complete technical readout of the station, it is, it is possible, possible, however, however unlikely, unlikely. <laughs> that they might find a weakness and exploit it. Yeah, it is possible. And the Vader's like, you know, the plans unlikely. you refer to will soon be back in our hands. Right. Um, and everyone else is like, mashed potatoes. Um, and then of course Vader goes on to mashed almost potatoes. kill Mahdi and all that. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, because Monty's all, you know, me, 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 me. <laughs> yes, he's Beaker <laughs> <laughs> from the Muppets. This is just a Tarkin's eating mashed potatoes and spitting them everywhere. Monty is now <laughs> Beaker. <laughs> Monty is Beaker from the Muppets. <laughs> just destroyed this whole Legion of Doom table of people. <laughs> Um, so I think it would be interesting for something to happen to specifically Tag's fleet or something like that for him to be saying like, Hey, shit's going down guys. And they're like, no, nah, you're, you're just, you're the bad one. <laughs> We're on this giant space ball weapon. You're the bad one. <laughs> <laughs> you're the bad one guy. <laughs> hey there guy. <laughs> Don't call me guy. You're the bad one. <laughs> yep. Anyway. So um, that's that. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, obviously, it could just be Pablo saying, you know, that's important because obviously we're going to find out what strength the actual yeah. uh, rebels have right. compared to them and getting the plans and why Tag would be upset. But I think it would be interesting for there to be an actual fleet conflict for that to be a valid yeah. conversation. Yeah. Um, and, of course, we know that they do things with the plans and, you know, all that from right. the things that came out. Call it movies. <laughs> I'm done. Michael, back to you. <laughs> well, I mean, that's pretty much it. We got to wrap it up here. Anything else you want to? You've had a note <laughs> on our last I three know. episodes that you've wanted to talk about. Do you want to talk? I'm. I am allowing you. I can. I concede my time to you, sir. <laughs> All right. Well. So there was. <clears throat> I'm sorry. We're out of time. <laughs> there was a thing on Reddit. Like seven months ago. <laughs> what was it? I don't remember what it was talking about now. <laughs> Luke force oh. choked the Gamorrean guards when okay. he entered Jabba's okay. palace. Yes. Okay, I'm, I'm back in. One, did he kill them? I'm in. I'm in. I got this. All right. <laughs> so, yeah. So Luke force chokes. The question was, does Luke force choke a Gamorrean guard, both the Gamorrean guards and Jedi, when he shows up at Jabba's palace? And a couple of the comments were saying, yes, yes, he does. I had always assumed that he just kind of knocked them out. Yeah, because they kind of like bent over, like hunched over or grabbing their stomachs. I assume he know? like choked them to passing out, but not to like killing, not like crushing the windpipe like Vader. Yes. To, like death. Right. I had always assumed that they, they didn't die. Well, first of all, that he had just kind of like did something to their stomachs or like. Gave him a little upset tummy or something. Bellyache. <laughs> Bellyache. <laughs> oh, my tummy. <laughs> uh, and then they just kind of, you know, <laughs> fell over. Yeah. So reading this question and the responses got me thinking about, well, if he did force choke them, I mean, do, we do kind of know after, well, it, you know, ever since like the cave in Empire. Yeah. Luke, um, has had this kind of pull towards well, the yeah, dark side. Yeah, he's at side. odds with the Force. Yeah. He's he's at 
because I'm obviously he's not a strict like Jedi. He's not strictly on the on the light side of the Force. Yeah, I mean at that point, that's when he's like wearing all black. In like, Jedi, in Jedi, yeah. he's yeah. he kind of seems to be way more serious, but almost kind of like at that point where Anakin was, um, in. And but less emotional. Obviously less of a So he was more in, dick, he was more in control of himself. Yes, yeah. but he also was at that point where like I am powerful and I can do this stuff. Yes. But right. almost teetering that line of is he doing this for good or for power? Right. Type of thing. So the question I had was uh one is this this pull that he has over empire and and into Jedi is that just because of his heritage like you're saying because of Anakin? Because it was the same thing. Is it Anakin still that same trouble? Yeah. Is this just the Skywalker line that's affected this way? Or is it just that when you have that kind of power of the Force? Yeah. Do you have Do you have that critical point in your Force learnings or accepting of the Force? Is there that critical, like that tipping point of which side you're going with? Of like, all right, I'm powerful. How am I going to you're use that? You're at this point in the RPG where you have to choose. Yeah, you choose whether you get the horns or the halo. <laughs> You choose the white hat or the black hat. Yeah. For everyone who's watched Westworld. That's a, that's a thing at Westworld. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and if you watch Mr. Robot, which I've been watching, I guess you kind of still have white hat and black hat because of the hackers. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Uh, both shows are amazing. Like you've geared up <clears throat> and you're all ready. You've yeah. learned everything you need to learn. And then you get to choose your white hat or your black hat. Are you yeah. going to be white hat or black hat? Sure. So is it is there that tipping? I guess there's that tipping point in the force of like, all right, I have all of the power now. What am I going to do with it? Yeah. And is was Luke at the beginning of Jedi? Was Luke at that? Point. Obviously, he seemed real badass walking into Jabba's palace and was like, yeah, I'm here to get shit done. I think to actually that point for him was in the Emperor's throne room when he was battling Vader. When that's he when finally, he finally made the decision. He yes. finally decided that's it. But I'm, at the beginning I'm of gone. Jedi, before that happened, yeah, was he at that point right. of, I am awesome. I've got no all this cool stop me. power now. Yes. yes. Like he finally has it? figured it all out. And yeah. he's at that point of he's using his power. He hasn't fully abused it yet to be on the dark side yeah. like Anakin did. Right. But he's very, very close to it until he finally makes that decision with in the throne room of, okay, Good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Good From here stuff. on. Good stuff. <laughs> I'm going to send those guards a, a basket Get of well. cookies on dowels. <laughs> cookies on dowels. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So I was uh, related to that. I was wondering in Ray's training, is that ever going to come up? Is that this balance of the force? We talked about that before. What if Ray is not the good guy in this? By the end, what if Ray is not the good one? <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't. I doubt it's it will happen. It's fun to think about that because I doubt it will happen. It's so crazy. <laughs> but what if she turns out to be the bad one at the end of all of this? Right. That Kylo has a moment of truth or whatever. Like he he and flops, turns. She flops, and then yeah. it's just like not it's at all what we expected. Flip flop. Yeah. Um. I d- I doubt that, but. Yeah, were that were there were, will there be that point for her, or has Luke known learned enough to work past that without that happening? Right. Um, well, I think, like I was saying, I think Luke has he's come to that point and made his decision and has worked all that out. But I'm wondering, in training Ray, is he gonna give her this? Like less what Obi Wan did, where it was very like one sided, figured and out, hiding things, and yeah, yeah. Is he gonna give Ray a more complete training, a more complete view of the Force? Well, even with Yoda and Luke, it's almost like you have to figure this out and make your own decision. Yeah, but that's kind of what. So is is that that's kind of what the Jedi is did. that the Jedi dickishness of I think like so. just that's figure what, yeah. it out and you know this is it's your problem to figure out not that we're gonna we're not gonna guide Here's you what you're not supposed to do now figure out the rest yes i is think that the jedi being dicks yeah. like we talked about before yes i think or so. is that just how the force has to work and you're you have you have to go that that route i mean yoda seemed less the typical dickish jedi than the rest yes um <clears throat> and yeah like you're saying he kind of forced Luke to figure out some things on his own, which he had to. He had to work through all that all that junk with Vader and being well, his yeah, dad. Yeah, all the daddy issues. Yeah, yeah, all that all that stuff. But I don't think, at least I can't 
I can't think of a reason why Luke wouldn't give her a more complete. Because it, it, the theme for this trilogy seems more, um, uh, uh, at least when the Force is concerned, more balanced, more like the Force is way bigger than you've seen Maybe. so far and has so many more facets. <clears throat> and like with Maz, not being a Jedi, not being a Sith. The Force is more involved everywhere instead yes. of the two people. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So is Rey going to get that more complete? Um, you have all of this power at, at your disposal, you know, you want to use it yeah. for good. You want to yeah. keep in touch with the light But at the side. same time, but, so Luke went after all this, you know, went after apparently search, hunting down Jedi temples and things like that. And he well, went into hiding. He's, he's a hermit, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for whatever reason, we don't know why that happened. Did he do that because he he's no longer really okay with the Force? Mm. I think he is he at a point where like it's not worth dealing with the force and being around people with it to th- make yeah. that decision. I think it's part of that. I think it's pieces of that. I think it's, it's like it's like no matter what anyone does with the force, there's always bad guys. There's always good guys, and like you can't stop. You can't reconcile the force. Like the force is its own thing, and I can't control it. No, I think it's less that and more. I'm always going to have this connection to the force and it gets other people in trouble. Does that make like sense? Like I'm dangerous because of my force power. I'm dangerous to everyone around me. Yes. Because of because the bad guys either, coming for me. Yeah. Or, either people are going to be looking for me yeah. or possibly. Uh, I'm assuming it has to do destiny with what we haven't found out yet is what people. happened between him and Kyle and Ben solo. Yeah. And that splitting, we don't know what happens. I assume that's around when Luke just doesn't come back. Yes. Um, I don't know. We don't know what, what interactions happen there, especially with Snoke too. Um, I assume it has to do with that, but I wonder, cause we don't know what's going on with Luke yet. Mm-hmm. We know he went on this mission. Maybe he, at this point, he doesn't want to have anything to do with the force anymore or even want to share it with Ray or teach her anything. I, th- I could see that happening at the mm-hmm. very beginning. Being very timid of like, it's not worth it. Yeah. Just go back home. Yeah. I could like see that. Yeah. You don't want to do this. Right. Yeah, um, I could definitely see him not being eager to to train her. Like I've been through this before. It's not just Well, and I mean, look what go. happened the last time he tried to train a bunch of kids. Well, yeah, legit. we assume that we assume everyone is everyone dead. died. <laughs> we assume yeah. well, yeah, we assume everyone's dead yeah. and um his temple or his school whatever, we assume right. that burnt down. Yeah. Um so maybe he's just done with it and that's why he went into the hiding. Right. So, so that's my question. I'm just wondering, you know, it, are we gonna? What struggles did more? he have? Yes. And are, and are those, those going to carry? Back? Yeah. Are those going to influence the way he he trains Ray? Which I th- I think the answer is yes. I just don't know how. Okay. You know. Yeah. Uh, okay. So. Interesting. That's all I had. Well, it was, a, it was worth waiting seven yeah. months for seven that. months. <laughs> yeah. No, that's <laughs> it's, it's an interesting <laughs> thing to think about. Um. So hopefully everyone got their Rogue One tickets. Uh, they're on sale by now, so go get what's left. I'm sure we have them. We, we will get tickets right, to right. something somewhere. <laughs> yes. It may not be Rogue may One, be but I'll have tickets to the burlesque show downtown. <laughs> or, uh, the next Ryan Gosling movie. I don't know. Who gives a <laughs> shit? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> All right. As always, please follow us at hokey underscore religion on Twitter. We have a Facebook page where you can like us, and we post stuff there as well. You can shoot us an email. Do you put things on Facebook? I do. Oh. You're not involved. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> as usual. <laughs> yep. Uh, you can shoot us an email at contact at Hokie Religion Pod. Or no, contact at Hokie Religion dot com, because we have our own oh, domain. Oh, secret email address. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, contact at Hokie Religion dot com. If you really enjoy the show and want to support us in any way, you can go to Patreon dot com slash Hokie Religion and send us a dollar. If you want. Just one dollar. It can be done. One dollar will help more than zero (laughs) dollars. It is true. Um, So, yeah, I think that is all of our plugs. Uh, Go follow Holy Religion (laughs) on Twitter. Apparently, Michael Michael created a Twitter account called Holy Religion. H-O-L-E-Y Religion. Uh, We don't know what's going to happen with that, and I'm going to (laughs) stay as far away from that one as he does from Facebook. There are two tweets right there. That are up there right now that are just golden. <laughs> I, so. I won't look. That's <laughs> okay. for you guys to find out. All right. All right. That's it. Right. I'm me. And You're you. I'm the other one. Goodbye. I'm Tyler. Huh? 
I'm Tyler. Okay. <laughs> I'm me. I already <laughs> said don't, my don't name. Don't forget me. <laughs> I already said my name. Okay, that's them. Do we end this now or do we just keep dragging We're this just out gonna, a little bit? We're just going to talk. Just get up and leave the room now. Just let it go. Um. Bye. Okay. Okay, really, really. Magic for a good blast here, three seconds.